Hello everybody and welcome to another naval action ship review. So today we're going to take a look at a special ship, so this means she isn't craftable, nor can you get it regularly at the moment, just as special rewards from the developers. So as is usual with these ship reviews, I'm gonna begin with history. So historically the Santa Cecilia was first known as the HMS Hermione. She was a 12 pound frigate, 32 guns, and of course as I said, Spanish service, it was the Santa Cecilia, and when she was recaptured by the British, she was then renamed the HMS Retaliation and then the HMS Retribution. So, anyways, Hermione was the lead sh ship of the six cl of I messed that one up. Hermione was the lead ship of six class of frig six ship class of frigates. So, she was the lead ship of a class of frigates with six ships in it. She was designed by Edward Hunt and the class was named the Hermione class and Hermione herself launched on the 9th of September 1782. Initially the Hermione was commissioned under Captain Thomas Lloyd who commanded her until she was paid off in April 1783. She was then some months later recommissioned and she was sailing under Captain John Stone to Nova Scotia on the 17th of October after which she was paid off in 1785. It is possible that the HMS Hermione was recommissioned under Captain William H. Ricketts during the Spanish arm armament of 1790, however this is not certain, so yeah. It is however certain that between October 1790 and June 1792 she underwent repairs and after said repairs she spent a period of refitting at Chatham until January 1793 and she was recommissioned after that under Captain John Hills in December of the same year. She set sail for Jamaica on the 10th of March 1793 and when I said the same year I meant 1792, sorry. Anyways, fast forward to the French Revolutionary Wars, the Hermione served the early years of it in the West Indies and on the 4th of June she participated in the British attack on Port-au-Prince where she led a small squadron that accompanied the troop transports. During the attack Hermione had 5 men killed and 6 wounded, also that Skype sound that was me, so don't go checking your Skype. Okay, I've got Skype muted. So, during the attack, the Hermione lost five men and six wounded, and the British did capture the town and its defenses. Hermione was also among the vessels that shared in the capture, shared in the capture, yes, on the 17th of July of the Lady Walterstas. And Hills died from the yellow fe fever at Port Royal, Jamaica in September 1794. And Captain Philip Wilkinson would replace Hills and was himself replaced in February 1797 by Hugh Pigott, which is an important part of the history of the Hermione. And uh, that's because he was a cruel officer who meted out severe and arbitrary pun punishments to his crew. And during a nine month period, as captain of his previous command, the HMS Success, he ordered at least 85 floggings. The equivalent of half the crew and two men died from their injuries. Hermione was sent to patrol the Munamat passage between the Dom Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Under Pigot she destroyed three privateers at Puerto Rico and on the, 20 on the 22nd of March 1797. And on the 20th of April she was the lead ship in a squadron which cut out nine ships at the Battle of Jean Rabal without suffering any casualties. And on the 6th of September 1797 she was in company with HMS D Diligence and HMS Renome when Diligence captured a six gun packet ship with troops on board. So one thing, this might, this uh, Pigot, the coming bit he might seem familiar and that's because he was in uh, the Hornblower series. I don't remember the name of the captain which he was in which inspired him or he was inspired by. Uh, I'm I'm saying that wrong. The captain in Hornblower was based on this guy. I don't remember the captain name, but just so you know. So, on to the meat of this thing, the subject of the mutiny. She was after all known as Bloody Hermione at, at some point. So, Midshipman David Casey was an experienced junior officer who had distinguished himself to Captain Pigot during his previous months, but his disrating was one of the primary triggers to the mutiny. About a week before the mutiny, Casey was at his station on the main top, and the captain noticed that a gasket, one of the ties that held the sails securely, had not been tied by one of the sailors under his supervision. Casey was brought before the captain and apologized for the oversight and took responsibility for it. The captain demanded that Casey apologize on his knees, a completely unacceptable and debasing demand for a gentleman. Casey refused to be humiliated in such a way 
Pickett offered it. Pigott offered him one more opportunity, and when Casey once more refused, the captain ordered that Casey receive 12 lashes, which is more commonly a sailor's punishment than a junior officer, and he was disrated, which would effectively end his career as a naval officer, so that was a rough punishment. Casey, however, was a popular officer among the crew, and they felt that he was punished unfairly, and the topmen began to plot a mutiny. Pigott had also developed the pra practice of frequently flogging the last sailor down sailor down from the working aloft. And on 20th September 1797, Pigot ordered the topsails to be reefed after a squall struck the ship, and this dissatisfied with the speed of the operation because these would be the yard arm men, the most skillful top men, he gave the order that the last men of the yard would be flogged. This, poli this policy was particularly unreasonable as the men would be spaced along the yard and the two whose stations were furthest out would always be the last down. Three young sailors in their haste to get down fell to their death on the deck and one of the sailors hit and injured the master Mr. Southcott. Pigot ordered their bodies throw into the s thrown into the seas with the words throw the lubbers overboard a particularly offensive insult in the seamen's vocabulary, and he then instructed two boatswain's mains to flog the rest of the topmen when they complained. The topmen were also flogged the next morning. So, as can be seen, Mr. Pigot, or Captain Pigot, was an awful captain. Like, he was harsh, and it's understandable why the men mutinied. So, with Pigot being so harsh and the humiliation of Casey and the deaths of the topmen, the sailors were driven to mutiny. These factors were the final events in a series of harsh and brutal punishment by the captain, and Dudley Pope in the book The Black Ship argues that it was not Pigot's cruelty that drove the men to mutiny, but the general injustice that he showed in his favoritism to some and overly harsh punishment of others. Had Pigot remained more even-handed in his leadership, according to Dudley Pope, mutiny might have been avoided. Of course, this is all speculation, and since it never happened, we can't confirm or deny whether this is true. So, in the evening of 21st of September, 1797, a number of the crew, drunk on stolen rum, rushed Pigot's cabin and forced their way in after overpowering the marine stationed outside. They hacked at Pigot with knives and cutlasses before throwing him overboard. Not a nice death. The mutineers, probably led by a core group of about 18 men, went, went on to murder another eight of Hermione's officers. The first lieutenant, Samuel Reed, the second lieutenant, Archibald Douglas, the third lieutenant, Henry Forshaw, the marine commander, Lieutenant McIntosh, the boatswain, William Martin, purser, Stephen Turner, Pacey, surgeon, H.T. Sansum, and the captain's clerk. Two midshipmen were also killed, and all the bodies were thrown overboard. Three warrant officers survived, however, the gunner, the carpenter, both were spared because they were considered useful to the ship, and Southcott, the master, was spared so he could navigate the ship. Southcott lived to be, the, to be a key witness along with Casey, who was also spared, and their eyewitness account and testimony were key to the trials of many of the mutineers. Three petty officers joined the mutiny, one midshipman, surgeon's mate, surgeon's mate Cronin, and master mate Turner. Fearing retributions for their action, the mutineers decided to navigate the ship towards Spanish waters. The Hermione sailed to La Guera, where they handed the ship over to the Spanish authorities. The mutineers claimed they had set the officers adrift in a small boat, which of course is a lie, but it had happened in the mutiny on the bounty some eight years earlier. The Spanish gave the mutineers just $25 each, that's a small amount, uh, and uh, presented them with the options of joining the Spanish army, heavy labor, heavy labor, or refitting their ship. The Spaniards took Hermione into the service under the name Santa Cecilia, and her crew included 25 of her former crew who remained under Spanish guard. So they actually received very little for the, for the ship. Meanwhile, news of Hermione had reached Admiral Sir Hyde Parker when the diligence recaptured the Spanish schooner. Parker wrote to the governor of La Guera demanding the return of the ship and the surrender of the mutineers. Meanwhile, he dispatched HMS Magazine under Captain Henry Ricketts to commence negotiations. He also set up a system of reformers and posted rewards that eventually led to the capture of 33 of the mutineers, some of whom were tried aboard HMS York and at least one aboard HMS Gladiator. Of these, 24 were hanged and gibbeted, one was transported and 8 were acquitted or pardoned. To Parker's fury, Admiral 
uh, Richard Rodney Bly had issued pardons to several mutineers acting against regulations. Parker forced Bly to resign his command and return to Britain in the summer of 1799. Hermione, under the captain of command of Captain Don Ramon de Chalas, had meanwhile sat in Puerto Cobello until Captain Edward ha Hamilton aboard a very famous ship, the HMS Surprise, cut her out of the harbour on 25th of October 1799. Hamilton led a boarding party to retake the Hermione and after an exceptionally bloody action sailed her out of danger under Spanish gunfire. The Spanish casualties included 119 dead and the British took 231 Spanish prisoners while another 15 jumped or fell overboard and Hamilton had the measly 11 men injured, 4 of them seriously and no one was killed. Hamilton himself was severely wounded. For this daring exploit, Hamilton was made a knight by letters patent, a knight commander of the Order of the Bath on the 2nd of January 1815 and became a baronet on the 20th of October 1818. The Jamaica House of Assembly awarded him a sword worth 300 guineas and the City of London awarded him the freedom of the city in a public diner on the 25th of October 1800. In 1847, the Admiralty awarded Hamilton a gold medal for the capture of Hermione and the Naval General Service Medal with class Surprise with Hermione to the seven surviving claimants from the action. Parker renamed the Santa Cecilia the Retaliation when she returned to British service. In late 1799 or early 1800, the Retaliation captured three vessels. There were the two American brigs, the Gracie, the Peggy and the Danish sloop Sisters. On the 31st of January 1800, she was renamed the Retribution. She was recommissioned in September of the same year and under Captain Samuel Forster. Apparently the retribution detained an American schooner sailing from Port Republic with cargo of coffee and logwood. And in early 1801 the retribution detained the Spanish schooner La Linda and American schooner Seahorse. Both were sent to Jamaica and on the 1st of October Melampus, Juno and retribution were in company when they captured the Aquila. On the third week of January 1802, Retribution arrived at Portmouth and subsequently she was fitted at Woolwich in October 1803 for service for Trinity House and in June 1805 she was broken up, ending her career in the British Navy. There, that's the history gun. Now for the in naval action Santa Cecilia. So in naval action she's a 42 gun 5th rate 12 pound frigate. She has a valve rating of 180 and a crew of 315. The Santa Cecilia is armed with both bow chasers and stern chasers, two each, both being either 6 pound cannons or 24 pound carronades. For broadside guns, meanwhile, she can carry 26 12 pound guns or 24 pound carronades, which uniquely isn't for, is the only frigate which can't carry 32 pounders on her gun deck. And on the weather deck, she can carry 16 9 pounders or again 24 pound carronades. The broadside weight as a result for cannons is 228 pounds, which is more than the other 12 pound frigate in game, the Bell Pool, which has 198 pounds, but it's less than the Essex, which is an 18 pound frigate, which has 324 pounds. Carronades, the. Uh, now, due to the 24 pounders, it isn't that impressive. It has a broadside weight of 568 pounds. The Bell Pool has a broadside weight of 568 pounds, and the Essex has 640 pounds broadside weight with carronades. The Santa Cecilia has a measly 504 pounds compared to the two ships I compared it to. Structurally the Santa Cecilia isn't doing too great with a structure on the side of 4085 which is less than the Bell Pool which has 4500 and the Essex which has 4600. The bow the Santa Cecilia has 1021 which is more than the Essex at 1008 but less than the Bell Pool which has 1125 and stern structure she is also the worst with 408 for Santa Cecilia, 450 for Bell Pool and 460 for the Essex. In terms of armor the Santa Cecilia is again nothing special. She has 37 centimeters on the bow, 62 centimeters on the side and 25 centimeters stern armor while the Bell Pool and Essex have exactly the same. I mean it's exactly the same as the Bell Pool and the Essex has 36 on the bow, 60 on the side and 24 on the stern. Sailing qualities of the Santa Celia in terms of speed is worse than all of the others with a speed of 12.15 knots which is lower than the Essex at 12.20 knots or the Bell Pool at 12.31 knots. In terms of turning the Santa Cecilia does 3.72 and the Bell Pool does only 3.13 or the Essex 3.11 so the Santa Cecilia 
turns better, but is slower than both of the ships. One advantage, of course, the Santa Cecilia has, which the others don't, is bow chasers, which makes a bit up a bit for this lack of speed. So, for the conclusion, the Santa Cecilia, she is a good looking ship, with boobies on the front. And uh, she has a decent armament with her 12 pounders. So the carronade armament, in my opinion, is a bit lacking. Her speed is uh, also a bit lacking, so ships outspeed her. She isn't the best tiny ship. She is uh, she's a perfectly okay ship. She, she serves well. She is a nice little premium ship. And of course, would I recommend you get her? Well, it's a special ship. If you can get your hands on it, get it. Although that's just my collector mentality going. As a sailing ship, she's decent. She isn't particularly excellent at anything. But she is a fun little vessel to sail. So uh, that has been the review of the Santa Cecilia. If you enjoyed watching, please leave a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed watching it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.